out of the box, first of First and foremost, you would have the instrument itself. So that's the XD7500. Um, I've already kind of unpacked the components so that you can see it. So first off, you'll get batteries for the instrument. These are backup batteries to make sure that uh, if you lose power, if you lose mains power, you won't lose your data. So those are actually stored in the instrument. I didn't unpack, but there's a, a, a AC adapter behind here that allows you to plug the instrument in. You also receive four sample cells. These are the same sample cells as the MD100 or MD600. So this is the um, very st the standard 24 millimeter that you're used to seeing in the rest of our instruments. You also get a zero, a 24 millimeter zero standard for zeroing the instrument and a 16 millimeter zero standard. So this is the 16 millimeter sample cell that's used in all of our tube test reagents. You also get a bag of tablet crushers and stir, stir rods. And then uh, kind of an interesting little thing here, you get a US, small USB stick. And on that USB stick, you get the current firmware of the instrument. You get our handbook of methods. For those of you that aren't familiar, the handbook of methods is a compilation of all of the different analysis methods that we have for the Lebulon products. And um, it gives you really important information, not only how to, how to, how to um, conduct the method, but also information on um, interferences, minimum detection limits, things of that nature. Also on this USB stick is quick start guide and then the full comprehensive manual. So we don't give you a full printed manual in the instrument. You do get a quick start guide. Here is an example. This is the Spanish version, English version. You, you get a kind of a packet of all the versions, but I just wanted all the languages. I just wanted to, to give you, show you an example. And then you get a certificate of the calibration of the instrument when it was first produced. So you get all the, the quality data to make sure the instrument is in specifications when it was shipped. Um, one quick comment on the, on the handbook of methods. For those of you that have never seen our handbook of methods, this is um, one of the earlier editions. And you can see it goes through, um, for those of you that are familiar with the Hawk Water Analysis Handbook, it's kind of similar to that. And it, again, it's a great reference guide. So this comes electronically with the instrument. If you wanna buy a printed version of this, uh, I believe this is probably in the price list. If not, you can contact Sandro and we can get pricing on that for you, okay? So this is everything that comes in the instrument. And now we'll take a tour of the instrument itself. So here is the XD7500. First thing I'm gonna do is turn on the power and you'll see that to ask us to please wait. And now first screen is date and time. Now the date and time are incorrect, so we're gonna correct that. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna select which one I'm gonna change. So date's already highlighted, so I'm gonna hit enter. Now I have the opportunity to change the date. Now I can change the date in two different ways. We have an up and down, right and left scrolling method, or you can enter on the keypad itself. So I'm gonna, Use the scrolling method, scroll up to March, number third month. Then I'm gonna to scroll to the right to move into the day. And then instead of scrolling, I'm gonna use the keypad and today is the 30th. So there's the 30th. And then I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna say 2021. Once I'm happy with that, I hit enter. And now you can see it says March 30, 2021. I'm not gonna spend time changing the time right now. So I'm happy, I'm now happy with this. So I have the, what, the instrument comes with four soft keys and they're related to a command that's above it. So right now there's only one option and that's F4 for me to say, okay, I'm, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna hit, okay. Now you can see the instrument now requires that we do a self test. So this is the area of the, of the Screen where it's always telling you which menu, which area of the menu you're in. So we're in the self-test menu now. Please make sure that, this, that 
No cell is inserted and the cover is closed and then press start to enter. Okay, so here's the cover and we wanna to look to make sure there's nothing in here. But while we're here, let's talk about this cell chamber for a minute. You'll notice there are a couple different um, areas of it. First off is an area for a rectangular cell. It can take anywhere up to 100 millimeters and it, and it does automatically detect the length of the cell. This happens to be a 50 millimeter. So it goes right in and you can see that it fits perfectly. If I had a 10 millimeter cell, the instrument would go in here and the instrument would automatically know it's 10 and not any longer. Um, also, this area is the standard 24 millimeter sample cell from the colorimeter series. So same as the MD100 and MD600. So that fits in very easily. Or this area here is the 16 millimeter cell. You can see one of our 16 millimeter cells. Okay, but everything's empty. Close the door and we're ready to go. So we want to press start and enter. So I'm gonna press start. Now it's going into the self test. You can see it already did a system test. Now it's gonna move on to the filter test, lamp test and wavelength calibration. That takes a minute. So while we're waiting, I'm gonna show you the rest of the instrument. So for, for the outputs, I mean, the um, connectors here, you'll see that we have the power connect cord here. We have an ethernet cord, ethernet connector, connection, sorry, USB-A and USB-B connection. And those are the only four connections, external connections to the instrument. Down here, you can't see, but where my fingers are is where you put the batteries in for that uh, backup battery to make sure you don't lose any data. Still working on the self-test. So really quickly, I'll take a quick look at the other buttons on that. So again, the scroll up and down, start, enter, zero, escape. Anytime you're in the instrument and you wanna go back to the home screen, just hit the little home icon that always takes you back. And then you can see you can send results straight to a printer or straight, or you can save them on a one button push as well. Okay, so we're now at the home screen, as you can see here. And our options from here are concentration, spectrum, kinetics, absorbance and transmission, or special wavelengths. Concentration is the color metric methods. So that's the area where it will automatically measure the concentration of different parameters. And that's the area where you'll probably your customer will spend the majority of their time. So that's that's basically, you know, from alkalinity to zinc, all of our pre-programmed methods are in that section. If you wanna just measure an absorbance or transmission at a specific wavelength, you would use this area. Um, special multi-wavelengths is where you go if you have a method that requires measurement over multiple wavelengths. An example there would be the ADMI scale, which is used to measure the color of water. And in that scale, um, the instrument needs to measure at, at multiple, diff multiple wavelengths across the range. So that's, that's the area that, of the instrument that you would go for that. Um, can, spectrum is of course a spectral scan. So that's, for example, say you wanna measure a sample across between 400 and 600 nanometers, you could enter that in and the instrument would take readings. It would scan from 400 to 600 every uh, five or 10 nanometers and you would get a kind of an absorbance curve across the range. And then lastly, kinetics is the measurement over time. So you can, if you're measuring kind of the state of a reaction over time, you, you, you would do that in the kinetics section. So we're gonna go back to concentration and I'm gonna hit enter. And you can see it says select method for measuring or insert a barcoded cell. Where do you find the methods for measuring? Well, you can see here, you can either go to the last method you used, you could go to a new method or you could go to the method list. We're gonna to go to the method list and you can see here, it's gonna pull up 
every single pre-programmed method that's in the instrument. Many, 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 many methods from alkalinity to zinc. It'll scroll over and start again. Over 120 different methods are available in this instrument as they are on the MD600. One thing um, to review in case you aren't aware, each method afterwards gives you a hint to the reagents that are used. So this is the DEHA in a powder, pill, powder pillow or powder pack reagent. Here's DEHA with a tablet and a liquid. So that would probably be a reagent set. This method is just tablet, method copper is just liquids and so on. If it has two T's, see if I can find two T's, that would be tube tests. the COD. So all of the COD methods are tube tests. So that has a TT after it. Okay, but I'm not going to choose a method quite yet. So I need to go back to the home screen. So if anybody remembers how we do that, it's very simple. You just go over here and you hit home. And you can see now I am back to the main home screen again. So I'm going to go back into concentration. But this time, instead of selecting a method, you can see the other their options insert a barcoded cell. Now, Lovey Bond has a series of uh, reagents, specifically the tube test reagents that are barcoded, as you can see here. So this is a barcode, those black, those two black areas are a barcode that indicates to the instrument which method. So this is the zero to 1500 mid-range COD method. So you can see on here, there's a little black line. What you need to do is you need to line that black line up with this line. So you enter and line it right up. And then as long as it's lined up, the barcode will be, will be red. And you can see here, it says a reagent blank value dated March 25th is available for this selected method, should it be used? And I'm gonna say yes, because I already stored that in there to save us some time. So I say yes. So now it says to start measurement with start enter. So I'm gonna go ahead and press start enter. And one of the nice features of this instrument is if you do something wrong, it tells you. <laughs> so you can see here ambient light, please close the lid of the rectangular cell shaft. And that would be this lid right here because the light travels through the instrument. And so right now, ambient light can get in there. And the minute I close this lid, you'll notice that it goes away. And now it completes the measurement, 132. So now that I did all the right things, if I try a different vial, line it up, this time it'll go straight to measurement and give me a result because I have everything done correctly. So that's an example of the barcoded vials. I also wanna show you an example of a standard, say chlorine measurement. So I'm gonna go back into concentration and I'm gonna to go to the method list. And this time I'm going to find chlorine powder pack mid range. So I'm going to see I'm picking method 113, chlorine mid-range powder pillow, free chlorine, 0.02 to 3.5. And I'm going to press enter. Now it says, so start measurement, insert a cell, or press start enter. And you can see here, I've, it's, it shows me the selected method, and it shows me the vial size, the sample cell size. So I want to make sure I use the correct one. Also shows me the wavelength and the range. So I'm going to put in a simulated result. This isn't real chlorine. It's actually one of the um, secondary reference standards. Now, again, it's always important that you line up. We have another little black line here. So I want to line up with the, with the um, make sure I line it up with the, with the triangle and I press down and you can see it starts to measure. and it gives me a 0.68 milligrams per liter. 
And that's a quick tour of the instrument. I hope this was of some value to you. And again, um, thank you for participating. Look forward to seeing those of you that know me. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Those of you that don't know me, I look forward to meeting you soon. Hopefully either at a trade show or um, in your home country as well. So thank you again and have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye.